Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. We are live with today's session. I am very, very excited to be here with you. And just to let you know, I have dogs barking in the background, but they're fine, so they're okay. <laughs> And I have kids home because we are experiencing our second local lockdown. So instead of school, the kids are home with me. So there's a good chance that you might hear some puppies barking or some kids asking questions or a little bit of banging around. I've got one cooking and one doing schoolwork. Um, and all of those things are fine. So if I get interrupted and I pop out to help somebody, nothing wrong with that because that will feel much better than ignoring everyone. And our topic today is about feeling good. So, yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I haven't done a live coaching session on YouTube here for a while, and I'm very excited to be back. I have a whole list of things that are going to make your life and business easier, and I thought what better way to share them with you than with a live stream. So this is something that I'd like to do on a regular basis. I'll be making these weekly sessions here on YouTube. So if you're new here, then make sure that you like the video and hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, and click on the notification bell so that you get a heads up next time I go live. So let's get started with today's topic, which is do what feels good. Do what feels good. <laughs> So why are we talking about feeling good when we're discussing simplifying business? Well, to me, it's because feeling good in what you're doing in your work really is intertwined with feeling good in your life as well. It's 2021. While you're watching this, it's 2021. <laughs> And these days, there's never been more blending of work and life than there is now, especially for those of us who are working from home due to the COVID situation, or those of us who have been balancing work and life for quite a while. I know many of us are women who had to give up the corporate life when we had children, and so we built our businesses uh, around our families. I know a lot of us are entrepreneurs who are building side hustles and so you need to balance your work around your life and you're finding yourself often working more than full-time hours. You know, you're at your day job and then you're hustling in the evenings and often late nights as well. And so for that reason, I think when we talk about feeling good today, I'm going to talk a lot about doing things that help you feel good as a person not just as an entrepreneur or a business owner. And that's because whatever you do in one area flows through and impacts the other area. And I'm known for wanting things to be easy. I'm very good at making things easy and simplifying things. And for me, I've discovered in the last couple of years that the more I do things well in my life, the more that flows over into my business and makes my business much easier. Increase in sales, increase in growth, no increase in effort. So... I don't know if that sounds good to you, but it works for me. Okay, so why feeling good? Well, the first point I want to make is when you feel good, no matter what it is that's making you feel good, when you feel good, you are more productive. So your work flows smoothly, time seems to fly, you seem more focused than usual when you're feeling good. Have you ever had that experience where you've had gone into the office for the day and you've got a to-do list of things that need doing and there's maybe five things on the list and one of them is something you really enjoy? You know, it might be easy, you might already know how to do it or it might be brand new so it's interesting or it might be a little more creative than you normally have to do. But, yeah, there's something on your list, on your to-do list that stands out and you just keep looking at it and that's the only thing you want to do on that list. <laughs> yes, that's because it's the feel-good factor that's drawing you to it. And when you're doing that particular task on your list as opposed to all the other tasks, that one feels like it's not even work. But the other four things on your to-do list feel like a really, really hard slog. Yes? 
really hard slog. It feels horrible. Nothing is flowing. Everything is difficult. Your systems start crashing. You don't have the tools you need. Somebody interrupts you. The phone lines stop ringing. You have complaints. People knocking on your door complaining. Whenever you're doing something that you're not looking forward to doing, it feels bad and it slows you down. But when you're working in flow or when you're doing something that feels really good, it's almost like all of the good things in the universe come together and make it a great experience for everybody. Time just completely disappears. It's kind of like that feeling, you know, when you're in a meeting and it's dragging on because you don't like the meeting and five minutes feels like an hour, but then you can be doing something else and an hour feels like five minutes because you're enjoying it so much. Exactly. So, yeah, work flows smoothly, time goes faster, and you really do focus because you're enjoying what you're doing. I'm somebody who doesn't like to multitask. I find that when I multitask, I get nothing done, and I feel frustrated and angry and stuck in a rut and trapped. But when I'm single-focused and I'm doing something that I actually like to do, then Everything works well. Everything is smooth. My systems are fine. Every resource I need just seems to appear at my fingertips. I don't get interrupted. Or if I do, it's because somebody has a new idea on making things even easier. Everything just becomes that little bit more magical. And that's because I'm giving something my full attention and I'm happy to be doing it. So, yeah, when you feel good, you're more productive. The point number two that I want to make is that when you feel good, doubt disappears and you radiate confidence you know what this is like right have you ever followed a creator or an entrepreneur or a business owner online and you just can't get enough of them (laughs) it's because they're so confident they just it's almost like light is shining out of them because they're so confident they just radiate calm and self-assuredness and yeah everything is amazing about that's because they're doing something that makes them feel good think about think about other things in your life you know if you have a particular sport that you love to do when you're out there let's say you love playing hockey when you're out there on the hockey field there's no drag anymore there's no rut there's no feeling of being trapped you just feel free and amazing and confident and yeah you go that's because you're doing something that does make you feel good it's something that you enjoy so when you feel good and when you're radiating that confidence and you're radiating radiating that self-assuredness then that's how your business starts to take magical leaps That's when you can charge whatever you want to be paid, not pricing things at what you think other people will pay because you're confident, you're good at what you do, you enjoy doing it, you're feeling good. Your worth is tied up in how you're feeling and it's very easy for people to see that worth because they can feel it coming from you. So, yeah, doubt disappears and you radiate confidence when you're feeling good. And the third reason why I think it's important to do things that make you feel good is that when you're feeling good, you are magnetic. People want to be around you because it feels good for them too. And this is when people binge your content. You know when you discover someone online and you really love, you love watching their videos, you love watching their reels, you love reading their blog posts, whatever it is. You love listening to their podcast. When you find someone that you resonate with, have you noticed that you go searching for other content from them? So let's say I found somebody uh, via a podcast. I'll listen to the whole season and then I'll listen to the past seasons and then I'll go and look and see if they're on social media. I basically become like a content absorbing stalker (laughs) because I just love the energy of that person. I love their advice. I love the way they make me feel when I'm consuming their content. Um, And it doesn't stop there. You know, many of us Google interview with so-and-so so so that we can go and find their content on other people's platforms as well. So, yeah, people want to be around you because it feels good for them too and they binge your content and also they buy whatever you have on offer and they buy it because they want more of you. 
They want more of what you're doing. They want more of what you're offering. They want to be in your circle for longer. And so that's why we always need to have paid offers available. Yes. Okay, so we've talked about why feeling good is so important. Now I think we should talk a little bit about how you can start to feel good because it's all well and good for me to say, look, when you're doing work that you love, it feels amazing, the time flies, you're in flow, you're not stuck in a rut anymore. But if you're not feeling good, you can't just flick a switch and then feel amazing. It's it's not something that comes naturally to most people. But there are quite a few little hacks that you can try and I have a list of ones that work for me that I want to share with you. I actually have to go and get a prop for this, so I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm back and I have a little prop that I'm going to share with you in a minute but yes how do we feel good all right it's all well and good to say look the better you feel the better your life and business is because the more people want to be around you and the more they want to buy your things but if you're not feeling good faking it isn't good enough faking it doesn't help because it's the it's the aura, it's the vibration, it's the vibe coming off you that is the good feeling part. It's not just what you're saying. It's not, you know, you can't force it if you're not feeling it. Um, and I often find that any sort of abundance, anything to do with um, good outcomes and feeling lucky and getting things um, kind of comes from that feeling. You don't, it's the things that you don't have to work hard for that seem to come to you or the things that you're feeling good about they come to you. We'll do another episode on that later. But how to feel good is very, very easy once you have a few tricks up your sleeve. So the first thing I would say to do is to, at the start of every day, every day, whether you're working or not, I want you to do something just for you. Not work. Doesn't have to be work-related. I want you to do something that is just for for you, something that you enjoy, something that you look forward to when you have it planned, something that makes you happy, something that makes you feel calm, feel relaxed, feel contented, feel comforted, feel joyful, feel amazing. And it can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be big. Small things work too because it's about the feeling that you get from it rather than the thing itself. So I'm going to go and show you some examples. This is my little happy notebook. My happy notebook is very handy because it's the place where I've listed all of the things that make me happy, all of the things that make me feel good. Now, it's very hard to see this because they're written in pencil because I like to chop and change them. But I'll read out a few of them. And some of them are little and silly and I don't mind because they make me feel good, so I do them. So here are some of the things. Now, remember, we're not talking about work right now. We're talking about life because you as a person need to feel good in order to be more productive and get more done and get more results, blah, blah, blah. So we're thinking personal happiness here. So things that make me happy. A beautifully made bed, a tidy room to relax in, big green plants, hot cup of coffee, a pot of peppermint tea, watching a movie in bed, reading a good book, uh, wearing a fluffy, cosy robe, putting on some makeup, um, curling my hair, taking a long hot bath, uh, looking at an oracle card for the day, going for a slow walk outside, uh, playing chess with my kids or checkers, Doing a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> I know that's not for everybody, but I love uh, puzzles. Doing a crossword puzzle. Baking. I love baking. Baking makes me feel really good. Um, going to the movies, playing the piano, folding, clean, dry washing. <laughs> I've forgotten I'd written that one down. <clears throat> but I like the slow, calm, methodical nature of it. 
um, cooking my favorite favorite Serbian dishes, going bowling with the family, my electric blanket. Okay, so immediately just from those, those are a whole bunch of random things that make me feel good. And if I was thinking first thing in the morning, I need something to make me feel good, long hot shower is in there too. So I would have a long hot shower and I would light a candle and I would maybe put some nice crystals in there and I would take my big fluffy robe in with me and some slippers so that I could get out of the shower and immediately feel cozy and comfy and then I would go and make a hot cup of tea or coffee and I would just sit for a while reading a chapter of a book right so they're little things but because all of those things are on my happy list they might not be your thing but they're my things because they're on my happy list I know they're going to make me feel good and I have no problem doing them first thing in the morning. Do we have to do them first thing in the morning? No. If you're working for yourself, you do have a little more freedom. So I would recommend doing at least one thing that makes you happy before you start your work day. But if you have no choice, I would rather you do something that makes you happy at some point during the day as opposed to never doing anything that makes you happy. Okay, so something is better than nothing. It doesn't have to be perfect. And in fact, wanting it to be perfect or feeling like you need to do it perfectly is going to suck the joy out of it and it's going to make it really, really difficult to feel good while you're doing it. Okay, it might be something little like giving yourself a really basic manicure, just a nail trim, some hand cream, maybe pop some clear polish on. It's not life changing, but it's a few minutes of nice, slow, calm treating yourself. Okay, so I want you guys to go and grab a notebook or a piece of paper or something. It doesn't have to be a perfect book either. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your computer. But I want you to start writing your own happy list. Watching Friends episodes is on my happy list. Watching Outlander. <laughs> so yeah, love my happy list. Okay. So do something for you. If you can do it first, do it first. Because then once you feel good, work doesn't seem that hard anymore. So you're going to write a list of all the things that make you feel good and then just choose one at the start of the day. Here's a little caveat that I want to give you. Do not add do something for me onto your to-do list for the day. I think maybe our stream pausing everybody. Don't worry. If we have our connection, we'll do this session again another day. But we'll be going until we know that for sure. So don't write do something that feels good at the top of your to-do list for the day. And the reason why is because as soon as you write that on the top of your to-do list, it's going to feel like a chore. It's not going to feel good anymore. So it's not going to help. Don't schedule in do something that makes me feel good into your calendar. Don't do it. If you have to put something in your calendar because you're worried somebody will book that time and you won't be available, then that's fine. Put in your calendar free time and block it out. Free time. But don't put do something good for me in your calendar because then it feels like a commitment. And it feels like you don't have a choice anymore. And then it doesn't feel good. And then it doesn't work. Make sense? Okay. So write down your happy things. Choose one at the start of each day or at some point of the day. And do it. Beautiful. Okay. Now, the next point that I want to talk about is when you're actually working. So here's how to feel good when you're working. I've got a number of points on this one written down, so I don't want to forget them. So I'm basically just going to go one by one so that you can chat about them with me. So you want to do the parts that you enjoy, outsource, hack, or automate the rest so that your work is work that you enjoy doing. This is not something that has to be expensive. This is not something that has to be difficult, and this is not something that you have to get perfect at any point, especially not straight away, but at any point, okay? Well, I want you to think about doing just the things you enjoy and then outsource, find a hack for, or automate the rest. So for example, I love making videos, but I really hate editing videos, which is why I live stream. 
I don't like wearing makeup every day. So on the days that I do wear makeup, that's when I make a video. And on the days when I'm not wearing makeup, that's when I create blog posts or emails or podcasts. And there we go. I don't like sales calls, so I don't do them anymore. Instead, all I do is leave a link to purchase one of my programs in my regular content. Um, and I use sales funnels that are automated. So there's always something that people can buy, but I don't have to get on a sales call and sell them into it. Um, so, for example, today I'll talk a little bit about my upcoming program, Let It Be Easy, and I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, it's a program that's in pre-sale right now with a huge discount and it's not getting released until September 6th. So if you buy it today, you'll save $600 and you can do the program from September 6th when it's ready. So I'll put a link in the description for that. Yeah, nice and easy. Just make an offer, have it available where people can see it or hear about it and that's it. So I don't like to do sales calls, so I don't do them anymore. I don't like eight hour work days. So instead what I do is I schedule in smaller blocks of time as available time for consults and project work for my clients. So it might be a two hour block. If it's a really big project, it might be a four hour block, but I lean towards two hours because I like to work a couple of hours a day and that's pretty much it. So no eight hour work days on my booking calendar. I also don't like to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one client work. So I rarely advertise one-on-one. -on -one. Um, instead, what I do is most of my one-on-one -on -one clients come through as trusted word-of-mouth referrals. And I, I just choose to say yes to my favourite past clients or referrals that feel like they'll be fun. And that's it. It's nothing personal if I don't take on the work. I'll often recommend somebody else for it if I can't work with somebody. But I've stopped saying yes to client work just because I am available because I don't always enjoy it because I'm quite an introvert. So even though I'm good at the work, I find I need a lot of time in between project work and consults and sessions to recharge and I tend to overcommit if I'm in people-pleasing mode. And so I just have it as a general rule now to limit that so that I don't fall into people-pleasing mode. And my last point here is I love passive income. I love, love, love passive income. It's an introvert's dream. <laughs> and so instead of only working one-on-one -on -one for clients, I really limit my one-on-one -on -one work, as we've talked about, and then I create simple online courses and eBooks. So Let It Be Easy is my upcoming course that we talked about earlier. And all that is is a program that walks you through all of the points that you can get stuck on in business and life and gives you simple solutions on how to make that easier. So it's the sort of thing that if I am working one-on-one -on -one with people, they'll call me up or they'll do a session with me and they'll go, oh, I'm really stuck right now because this is happening and this is happening. And that's the point where I'd normally go, oh, well, if that's happening, here's a really easy way to make that simpler or here's a way to not have to do that anymore or here's a way to solve that problem. But instead of doing that one-on-one, -on -one, I just take all of those questions now and I put them in course format and answer them for everybody at the one time. We keep the details anonymous, of course. <laughs> but basically, every time somebody asks me a question, the answer goes into one of my programs. And then I sell those programs or ebooks. If you're not into making a video course, you don't have to. You can write an ebook. It's just like writing a blog post. <laughs> and you can sell that for passive income too, or a template pack. Passive income is magical. And that's it. That's all I have to talk about today. I hope that you found our session very, very helpful. To recap, when we're talking about doing things that feel good, we mean do the little things in your life that make you feel happy, content, cosy, calm, thankful, joyful, grateful, all of those things. If you do something that makes you feel good, then your life and your business will benefit from it, okay? So do something that makes you as a person feel good and then when you're working, just do the parts you like and then outsource or hack or automate the rest. And then you'll enjoy your work every day. You'll enjoy your life every day. Nobody has a perfect 24 hours every day, but you will remember when you look back the little moments where you felt good and you were enjoying what you were doing. And then the more and more you practice doing that, the easier your day will be, 
the easier it gets to do it and the more fun you have until, yeah, you can just be doing stuff you love all day and getting paid really good money for it. Doesn't that sound good? Okay, if you've had a good time today and you want to join me for the next live session, I would love you to. Just make sure you hit subscribe and tap the notification bell and then you'll get a notification of when I plan to go live next. We're aiming for one a week. I like to be a little bit flexible with times so that I'm running the sessions when I feel good. Um, so, yes, make sure that you're subscribed and that way I will notify you when we're going to go live next time. Okay, if you want to join the Let It Be Easy program, I'll put the link in the description box and I will see you in there. Bye.